Welcome. I'm Sandy Shore, founder of SmoothJazz.com Global Radio, and I'm here with critically acclaimed New York-based Swedish singer-songwriter Anders Hulst, as well as Los Angeles-based new soul star singer Cy Smith, who has loaned her vocals over the years in support of Whitney Houston, Shaka Khan, Usher, and most recently Chris Bode. That is just to name a few. Also joining us is industry vet, record producer, songwriter, Gordon Chambers. And Gordon is the winner of eight awards from the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, a Grammy for his song, I Apologize, that he wrote for Anita Baker, plus three other Grammy nominations. Welcome, people. So wonderful to see you all. (laughs) Thank you. We're all together here to discuss a really special song written by the late, great George Michael. Um, Cowboys and Angels. And this came out uh, on 1990s Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1 album, an album that is included in the book, A Thousand and One Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. Mm -hmm. So before we begin drilling down into this killer tune, which appears on Anders' latest album, Endlessly, featuring Cy and produced by Gordon, and this is why we're all together here, I want to begin and uh, read to you in George's own words about the song. The song was written about a short-lived love triangle where he was in love with a man while his female friend was in love with him, but no one knew at the time. (laughs) And George said that she was in love with me because she couldn't get me. And I was in love with him because I couldn't, couldn't get him. It's a very personal lyric but it's about the ridiculousness of wanting what you can't have. Well, Sandy, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much for doing this. It's it's wonderful to have you here. And thank you also, Sai, of course, for um, being such a wonderful artist and and, uh, helping me on this song. And and Gordon, of course, who who did a great job with the entire album. He added his uh, musicality and and, uh, soul to it. and uh, I, I think what captured, what, what got me interested in the song is actually the, uh, the groove in itself. Maybe not so much the lyrics at a first glance. It was the sort of the, the atmosphere, the cool sort of late urban night vibe with that uh, haunting uh, uh, pace and, the, and the, the strings and everything. So I, that's what got me interested in the song. And then you know, it's a seven minute song. So when I started to think about doing a cover, I thought that, uh, so if there are three people here, maybe it's one too many. So maybe maybe we can do a duet. And uh, we actually uh, took away one part of the song, which is sort of a kind of an interlude uh, in the middle there. So I guess it was the, the, the groove of the song, the vibe of the song that really got me interested. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Sai, did you ever meet George Michael? I never met him like, hi, I'm Cy kind of meet, <laughs> but um, I was on the uh, finale of American Idol where he performed. Um, I think that might have been season 10 or something like that, season nine or season 10. And, um, and I just remember, you know, from a distance sort of him being such a very serious artist, you know, mm-hmm. and that that set American Idol at the time, at least was such a frantic kind of you know everybody is just kind of ah you know hollywood you know and he was very serious and very sort of stoic and um and i could appreciate that you know because i love someone who is in such control of their personal atmosphere that it doesn't matter what's going on around them they have their own like they have their own atmosphere period and gordon how about you did you have a chance to work with him no, I never met him, never worked with him, but always just admired his, you know, his music, his lyrics. I mean, you know, who didn't grow up like loving Careless Whisper? I mean, it was just yeah. this very mature, very mature song. But I remember like being in high school and I think like dancing to that at the prom in high school and thinking like, like everybody at the prom knew that song. And it was very sophisticated, like lyrically, he brought a, a, a real class and elegance and musicality and pop sophistication, which is fascinating because he grew up as this, like as a teen, you know, almost like a teen idol, like somebody who was more known for their style and grew into this, this artist with great 
gravitas and, and, and content and lyric and character. And what a stylish man, not just um, a genius, a lyrical genius, but somebody who was just iconic in, in, in his style. I just always mm -hmm. remember how good he looked in his clothes and his, you know, no matter all, all the different periods, he just was like, wow, like, you know, you wanted to like be like him. And, and, and he, he is the essence. I think the very thing that Anders was attracted to the song is he embodied it is just in his music, but also in his being the essence of cool. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, for sure. And that jazz pop thing. I mean, this is a young man that went from wake me up before you go, go to careless whisper in less than a decade. Yeah, no. it, it was really quite a jump, quite a leap. You know, I know that was with Wham and then he was on his own. But to, to my ears, Anders has always embodied the jazzy pop sound that, you know, so, so many of us just love, you know, with the with soul nuances and jazz sophistication. And I think that's what is so cool about Brain Trust here with the three of you <laughs> that um, you know, took responsibility for this song. And, and the arrangement is, is really, really stunning. Thank you. Well, it was it was a very interesting uh, process because we recorded this album over uh, I think it were two days. We did like four songs every day or something like that. There were long long days, <laughs> and yeah. and we said, okay, this is going to be a jazzy song. So I think that we we all sort of recalibrated and and uh, did we did the music first, of course, and uh, it sticks out a little bit on the album because it's a very jazzy tune, but. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed it. I think we enjoyed recording the songs, and then then we did the the vocals after that because I, I asked Gordon who, who could I work with here, and he definitely uh, recommended Sai, which I'm very very grateful for. And it turned out that you were in Ch New York, I think that uh, on on this uh, with Chris Bodie at the Blue Note, I think. And then so we did re yes. recording afterwards. Uh, but that was a little scary to work with Sai because she's so great and professional and has this huge you know and it, so i had to go through the song with her uh, which was an honor of course but then then she took over which which i was very grateful for. <laughs> i i don't i don't i can't believe um it was scary to work with me anders that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> to me, I'm always so bashful when it comes to working with new people. So I'm the one who's usually like, ah, you know, um, if I'm by myself, that's a whole different thing. But if I have to get to know a new engineer and a new artist and a new producer and all of that, believe me, my nerves are on 100 and, and <laughs> I'm like shaking in my boots. So uh, um, I was just hoping to deliver whatever it was that you guys needed or, or wanted from me, um, yeah. especially because I wasn't as familiar with the song at the time. I mean, I, I think I had heard it, you know, in maybe listening to the hit, uh, George Michael's album in passing, but I, I had never dug down into it to get to know it until you guys called me for it, you know? Mm. So, um, so I had homework to do, you know, which I, I you know, which I tried to do, um, but I was the one shaking in my boots, believe me. Wow. I know that, <laughs> that Gordon gave me a wonderful present for my birthday uh, a couple of months later, which was like a photo of the two of us when we yeah. go through the, the sheet music. Right. And, yeah. and, and uh, oh. all of a sudden I look very professional because I'm pointing out to you, you know, where you should <laughs> sing. I, I love that. It's framed and it's on the wall. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's super cool. It all, it's always cool when you're like going through a chart and somebody captures it on picture, especially if it's in black and white. That's immediately yeah. a coffee table yeah. picture. Exactly. <laughs> coffee <Yeah. table> book. <laughs> totally. You know, a funny thing, here's a here's a fact about the tune. Um, it was the fifth single off of Listen Without Prejudice. Mm. So I think over here, speaking, you know, uh, on behalf of uh, my fellow Americans on this panel, it wasn't a song that we all heard as much as the first four, or the first two off that project. The label was disappointed in it uh, and, and doing a little bit of research on the tune, which is surprising. But um, and it, it did come out at seven minutes and 14 seconds. The radio edit was 434. So it's a song that I think us fans of George's, you know, the, uh, and we, let's be honest, we were listening to those tunes on, on the album for sure. 
but um, it was a buried song in a way. And this is why I, you know, as a radio programmer and DJ, um, was so excited when Anders covered it, and even more excited when I uh, saw you on it, Sai, because I, you know, we we probably all know Sai, whether we, you know, know her by name or not, but all of the years that you've got in with all these incredible artists. And I actually discovered you, believe it or not, being the jazz person with Train. That's where I discovered you. <laughs> oh, wow. And I love that band, you know, and loved you on the on the project. So um, yeah, so I was cool. real excited when I when I saw this on Anders' new album, Endlessly, and I saw the duet and, you know, with Gordon involved, it was, uh, it was, I was definitely gunning for this to be a single release for him, you know, in our genre over here. And I think it's just going to be a fantastic radio success. I honestly do. And the chemistry between the three of you, you know, it really elevated it. And I'm looking forward to seeing the, the future of where this is all going with the new tune. Me too. I remember when Anders told me that he wanted to cover this song. I remember listening to it and calling him. I'm like, this song, Anders? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> of all the songs. Because I, I, I too was not as familiar with it. Um, we had done another cover um, on the album of One in a Million You by Larry Graham that I love, mm. yeah. that Anders did not love as much as I loved. Um, and so, but he was very specific and very intentional about this song. And that's, that's, the, that's a true artist. A true artist has a vision of what they love and, and why they love it. And, mm. and, and a true artiste um, like Anders, you know, is also attracted to tr other true artistes like George Michael. So yes. I heeded the call and I have just enveloped myself in the song and the song it, it just was, it's, it's, it's melancholy, it's moody, it's, it's mysterious. You know, it's something that um, when Anders asked me to come on as a producer for this album, I listened to all of his three prior albums. And this song, I think, made the connection between the, the other albums to this album. It was kind of a, a, a bridging of the two sounds of this album being a more soulful album and the others being a lot of more European pop kind of album. So it's kind of like a nice bridge in between the different sounds of Anders. But I grew to really love the song. Um, you know, the band, I have to shout the band out, Shedrick Mitchell, um, one of the most amazing keyboardists I player I, I've ever known, you yeah. know, who was our, our music director on this album and played, you know, keyboards, all the keyboards on the album and helped put the band together of all the other musicians. They played their hearts out just beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and, and, and sitting down when I first sat down with Shedrick and said, you know, this is a song Anders wants to do. And he and I had our sort of first rehearsal and, and talked about how to edit it and shorten it and make it a little bit more radio friendly. And I just had a great time, you know, adding some vocal vo background vocals to it and singing with Sai in the studio and making sort of an operatic symphony of the background vocals <laughs> so that Anders could sort of sit on top like a cowboy and Sai <laughs> could sit... <laughs> you know, on top like an angel. And it's <laughs> this sort of mysterious, operatic, soulful, jazzy symphony of, I think, a baritone cowboy and a beautiful <laughs> angel. And I think it just came out beautifully. Yeah. I'm really proud yeah. that we've done this and I'm proud of Anders for finishing and releasing an album during the pandemic. And <laughs> I is like my hero, my heroine. She's always like doing all these amazing collaborations and, and, and solo artistry and touring. And, you know, I, I, I was really happy to put this dream team together of those two voices together. And I'm, I'm just proud that you've chosen it as single and, and wish it the very best. My pleasure. But I got to go back real quick, if you don't mind, Sandy, to Cowboys and Angels and just how Gordon was talking about um, sort of the juxtaposition between Anders' voice Gordon's background arrangements uh, and, and my voice. And, and to me, it's so befitting of that juxtaposition of the actual words, cowboys and angels, um, <laughs> to create a, a template and then put these two voices that are very different, you yeah. know, together uh, as the concepts of a, a cowboy and an angel are very different. Um, I just love that. You mm -hmm. know, I, I love that interpretation musically. I love lyrically what what that sort of reads as. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I always, you know, 
anybody who knows my my own writing knows that I love a good you know oppositional <laughs> you know <laughs> juxtaposition like that you know I, I love that kind of concept putting things together that don't seem like they go together you know yeah. um, my last album was called sometimes a rose will grow in concrete and it's that same sort of thing you know seemingly beautiful a, a, a beautiful thing coming out of a seemingly impossible circumstance um yeah. so so I, I i just love you know being a part of that and thank you for giving me that call you know because it it stretches me um musically and vocally too um to to get in where i fit in you know mm. <laughs> so thank you for that well said yeah. Well said. Thank you. Thank you both Gordon and Sarah. I think I think what was very interesting, and I don't know if we should include this or not, but, but when we were going to record the song, I, we, Gordon and I was discussing, so how do we do this? I mean, it's a duet. So do I sing the first verse and she sings the last, the, the second and how we sing it together? I mean, how do we do this? No, it's like, you, you just, uh, you sing through the whole thing and then, then she can sing through the whole thing. And then then you're going to respond to her. Do whatever you want, you know. Just just respond. So I was responding, and she was responding. We were resp we were all responding. And I was thinking, uh, you know, could this really work? And I said, okay, now you have to leave. So we had to go out and have whatever coffee or whatever. <laughs> we let, went for a, uh, an hour, and then we came back to the studio. And then you and and Benji, Benjamin Volner, our our engineer, cut this together, and it was just magic to me. Because I thought we were just, you know, doing our own things. I mean, of course, we were sort of responding to one another and and so on and so forth. But it just, it just, it was there. It was just a, yeah, that was an incredible experience for me. Uh, you know, I was sort of linear a little bit, <laughs> and then it came out mm. incredibly like a conversation. You know, uh, yeah. that, that was that's the joy of producing. It's like you don't know you don't know where it's going you know yeah. sometimes the producer's job is to make it look like they really know what they're doing <laughs> and because and sometimes you know when you're in the producer chair you really don't know you really don't know what's going you're the most nervous one actually actually of all but you have to fake it and look like you're so in command yeah. you know but you have to you know create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable just being themselves and being experimental and then you know and then you sit with your engineer and ben was amazing yeah. to work with throughout this whole album i mean yeah phenomenal you know of re both recording it and helping me edit it you know and really being a real um just more than a professional really being an emotional professional like really yeah. caring and listening intently and and getting getting the vision, getting the beauty, you know, getting the poetry mm -hmm. of it all. And it was a mm -hmm. joy, really, I enjoyed working with him. You know, he he's an artist, you know, in this collaboration. He really is mm -hmm. an, a, a, the fifth or the fourth wheel of this whole thing with with how he helped me put it together. And he was very patient with me and I'm, I was a very much a taskmaster with him. <laughs> you know, let's move this here. No, not there. A, a second, a, a millisecond, no, Ben. A milli millisecond, but uh, <laughs> it, it me, and it really came out beautifully. It, it, it's um, it's it's the best of what music can be. Like when music puts different sounds and flavors and experiences and you know together. That's the joy of me. That's what music is for. Music is bringing people together. You know, I wish right. our country could be as harmonious politically as cowboys and angels. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. If your mom sends you to the store and says, get, you know, some eggs, some flour, some sugar, some honey, some meatballs, and you, you think you know what it's about to be, and it's just meatballs. Wait, wait, what is she about to make? You know, right. and you bring all the ingredients yeah. and you set them there and, and you don't really know, you know, what's about to be cooked, but, but, you know, you're the producer. Once you see all of the ingredients, yeah. then you're like, okay, I know what I'm about to make now. You know, yeah, that you know what it tastes good right, right right you know and I, and so it's so yeah like anders said i you know i didn't know how it was going to turn out and heard the problem when i heard it, it was lord i was like mm. wow this is amazing such mm -hmm. an amazing arrangement and uh, 
amazingly produced and just so well put together. I, I, I couldn't be more thrilled that I, that you guys called me for this. Thank you. And, and Thank everybody you. who's listened to this now, you have to listen at the end of the song because their size uh, genius comes out in this little pirouette. I was thinking about you yesterday because I was watching the figure skaters, right? And you do this little pirouette at the end of the song, which is like a figure skating, you know, at the end of the of the routine, you do this little thing that is so adorable. I, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the end love, is the best part. <laughs> I, but I mean, I love when you call boys and angels. I love that improv that you did, <laughs> Anders, because you laid that down first and then she responded to that. I just love yeah. how the ending is really pretty. It, it's it because it's this very mysterious song, but it ends really like on a major note. It, like it, it reminds me of the end of the Wizard of Oz or something. Like yeah, like they finally like got to Lena Horn singing "If You Believe" or something. At the end. <laughs> I think they become friends at the end. You know? I, I think, think so. so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just super psyched to have anything I have, I've done be described in a dancer term because I've always wanted to be a dancer. So uh, <laughs> thank you well, for you that. Are. Well, you are. You are. You are. In my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sort of turning around. And That's wonderful. It's glitter, you know. It's but I, you, know, you know, you know what's, what's, it, what's very enjoyable about working on this record is that like, um, you know, most times in the studio, most voices are, most male voices that I've produced are, are tenors. And most of the, the voices, the female voices are altos with a bit of, you know, top to it. But like Anders is a true baritone and Sai is a true soprano. Mm -hmm. So it was like the frequency, like the frequencies of this song were so wide musically. And then the music sort of sits in the middle of it. So it's like when I just listened to it again, right before we did this and just like, like your ear goes from here to here. It's it's wide. It's big. It's it's vast. It's like a it's like a it's like it's cinematic. Just sonically cinematic. Just the different mm -hmm. textures of the voices. You know, mm -hmm. I love that line. You when Sai sounds like Mae West. I'm not the girl for you. It's like, <laughs> it's like Mae West or something. You know? <laughs> It's like he comes in all big and bold when your heart is in someone else's head. She said, "Like I'm not the girl for you." Like, mm, no, you're not. It's just very. It's like, it's, it's, so, it's 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 it is really a story. It's a yeah. movie. Yeah. It is. It's epic. It is epic. Yeah. 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 I, I love the recipe. Um, uh, analogy there, Sai, because mm. think about it. I mean, like, you know, it, it sounds like it wouldn't all go together when you throw the meatballs in, but <laughs> we're talking about a professional chef. If it's mama, you know, she knows what she's doing and that right. you guys are the professional chefs in a way, you know, you're bringing your little thing to this recipe here. And that's why, you know, we started with an amazing song, which is, you know, the ingredients. And then we took it for a little bit of a spin, you know, a contemporary spin. And, um, you know, and I just really, you can hear the art in it. It's just, it drips with art. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's audio art. It really is. And it, it does have conflict. And I do think there's resolution. I think they are friends in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, think so. I like to think so. You know? A happy thruple. They become <laughs> thruple. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, you know, that's the beauty of um, of legacy. You know, George Michael's legacy is that, you know, his songs will live on forever as long as there are people like Anders and and Gordon or and myself or you know any you know who who want to cover them and and make sure that other people hear what might be a buried track. You know. Yes, yes. Um, and and I think it's important. It's just as important as as writing. You know, mm -hmm. original material to me is 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 covering things that are important to you. You know, mm -hmm. and making sure that other people know you know where you're coming from and where and where your artistic um, inspirations come from. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that Anders pulled this song up. You know, mm -hmm. Thank you. a well, buried track becomes a buried treasure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you all for your time and your input. If there, is there any any other last minute thoughts that we want to capture here? 
No, I, I just say that I'm very, I'm very grateful for this, uh, Sandy, that you took this initiative. Uh, you know, Sandy came to New York to visit uh, with her friends from Smooth Jazz, and we had a wonderful uh, couple of days. We went to an art, art uh, tour, and then you came home, and we had drinks in my place, and said, "What are we going to do here? We're going to do video, and where is Sai, and where's Gordon? You know, what are we going to do?" And then you came up with this idea, and I thought it was a a wonderful idea, actually, and and yeah. it's sort of, uh, it, I, I think it's uh, just wonderful. And uh, I think it's, it, I think people are very hungry right now since we're all still home a lot, you know. Yeah. Or we're video is such a big thing, right? We're watching it while we're waiting for something. It's like so. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to drill down into this. I mean, we can make music videos, and they're awesome too. But to really yeah. get, behind, get get into the heads of the people that yeah. were, were responsible for doing this. And that's the three yeah. of you, you know, and Anders had the catalyst and Gordon knew to bring in Sai and Sai, you brought it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's really, the synergy <laughs> is just gorgeous. And I'm, I'm very thankful that we could all meet together. I know how busy each and every one of us is, so we won't keep you any longer, but thank you for making this time work. And thank you. And I'm I want to say I'm very mad that I was not invited to those drinks. I'm <laughs> mad too. <laughs> I know that sounds fabulous. I, yeah, so we had uh, fun. I'm, uh, I'll sorry. be honest with you. I'm surprised I came back to California after those drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had a good we had a good, I, I'm glad we ended the evening at two two a.m. though because it could have <laughs> gone it could have gone really bad there. <laughs> Anders was doing a little bit of arm twisting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Next time we will have to get together. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And well, I miss you. I miss you, Gordon. We should work. I'm, we should I'm here in Brooklyn. Damn, we have to get more songs together. Jesus. I could walk to your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sai, will you do me a favor and say hi to Chris for me tonight? I sure will. We we go way back. Okay, I will. yeah, yeah you're you're not far. You should come on into the city and see us. You know, I I really wanted to. I think this Omicron thing has me staying behind. Uh -huh. You know, bedroom doors. <laughs> I'm just not. I get that. But I, um, get that. I wish I would have. I I do. It's just it's three more nights. Three more nights, including tonight. So tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. So six more shows. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. if if um if I change my mind, I know you guys are going to get busier and busier as the weekend goes on. But I'll I'll send you a note. All right. I appreciate that. that. Yeah, say hi yeah. and uh, thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, you guys. Got, we got thank some good you. stuff here. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. bye. Cowboys and angels. Cowboys and angels.